Hello, Chris Gonzalez here. I just completed this weekend a three-day audit at a dealership in, uh, in South Florida, and I wanted to share my findings because I think that a lot of the things that I covered and I shared with this dealer might help you um, tighten up your processes, uh, improve your CSI, and uh, increase your income and your bottom line. So I started my audit in service, and uh, the first thing I do is I kind of just survey and I watch the processes that are currently in place, how people interact, um, what the advisors, the ASMs are doing, what the technicians are doing, what the service manager is doing, and um, a lot of times I find that the service manager is not on the drive. And uh, if you're a service manager out there, this is key to ensuring that your operation stays um, effective, uh, CSI is good, and that a process is followed. You know, out of sight, out of mind. You know, I know there's a lot of paperwork to do, but you got to pick and choose your times. So if you're a service manager, start your day in the drive, greeting customers, um, assisting your ASMs, assisting the porters, uh, communicating with the technicians, because just your presence is going to improve the process and ensure that you increase income and uh, help with your CSI because you can inspect what you expect. Uh, the next thing is you have to begin reviewing repair orders from the previous day and the previous week. And what I find most times in dealerships is the standard one-liners. And uh, what I mean by that is one job uh, per RO, and it's usually what the customer came in for. And if your ASMs are not employing your technicians, then your technicians in turn are not gonna employ your ASMs uh, through recommendations. So a uh, simple fix, have them open up that multi-point inspection, um, have them check for open campaigns. Well, that you know, open campaigns should be a must. Have a meeting with your staff. Make them aware of not just the sell factor, but the safety factor. I mean, think about it. These cars come into your service department, and our consumers rely on your level of expertise to make them aware of any sort of issues their vehicle might be experiencing or things that might be going or things that might need to be changed. So if you open up that multi-point inspection and you get your technicians to pull those wheels and check that car out thoroughly, you're not just going to increase your, your hours per RO, but you're also going to increase the safety uh, for your consumers and the roads. So um, yes, employing your ASMs to employ your technicians, your technicians to employ your ASMs, it's, uh, you know, everyone's got to be accountable to each other. The next thing that I find is um, moving into the parts department is I always ask for a, um, an inventory to see how, much, uh, how many parts you have in inventory. And this particular dealership had $410,000 worth of inventory. Uh, the next thing I want to know is the obsolescence. How many obsolescent parts do they have in their inventory? And this particular dealership had 39000 so the next thing we have to find out is what um, the manufacturer is going to allow that dealership to return. And usually the manufacturer will give you credits uh, that you could use to return those parts. So this particular dealership had $900 um, dollars worth of credit with the manufacturer, which is not a lot when you got $39,000 worth of obsolescent parts. So I asked the parts manager, you know, what is your strategy? How are you going to get rid of these parts? And um, most of their response is simple, you know, well, we're going to uh, uh, wait for more credits from the manufacturer and, um, and send them back. And, and, and I focus on age and I make sure that I send back the oldest ones. But that's great. But you have to put a process in place to reduce this. And um, I always recommend retail arbitrage, which is a term that's used to take items from one area or one uh, demographic and introduce it into another like across the country. So uh, Revolution Parts is a good uh, platform to use to help you sell products digitally, uh, creating an e-commerce uh, site and process, staffing your dealership with an e-commerce person who can you know, make sure items are being displayed on the site, uh, sites like eBay. eBay is a great one. Um, not many dealerships do it and uh, you know, because most of your staff's not technologically savvy and uh, just once again, out of sight, out of mind. So having them create that e-commerce site and pushing those products on eBay will open up your market, not just to the people who walk in or in your neighborhood. You're gonna, you know, you may sell those parts in California or in Florida or in New York or wherever your store is. Um, there's a market out there that is 
uh, has a demand for your parts. So help you reduce obsolescent parts, simple e-commerce. Uh, the next thing is you have to uh, try to beef up your wholesale counts. And that means employing a driver who doesn't just drive products around, who doesn't just drive parts. Uh, hiring a driver that has sales ability, who can walk into uh, body shops and, um, you know, uh, just shops and, and sell your services and provide another uh, point of contact, you know, and generate some, some business and some extra accounts. You also have accounts, lists, usually. The manufacturer provides you with lists of vendors and uh, shops and wholesale companies that uh, you can target and call on the phone or visit and generate additional accounts that way. So next, after I leave parts, I usually go into the sales department. And uh, so we talk about an audit. I start at seven o'clock in the morning and by let's say eight or 8.30 I'm in parts and by nine o'clock, uh, I'm about due to run into the service to the sales department and you know I check with your managers and your staff and I talk to employees and I just kind of watch the process and the flow of things and I like to sit down with management and uh, ask a manager what he does and uh, after I ask a manager what he does I ask him what the other manager does and what I find shocking is that most managers can tell you what they do but they can't tell you what their partners do uh, which means you have two, three, four, or however many sales managers you have in your store kind of doing one of the same thing and not a whole lot getting done. So uh, employ your management staff to kind of get on the same page. And uh, I, I like to use the baseball metaphor. And the baseball metaphor is simple. When you look at a baseball diamond and you look at the positions that the players play, um, I always found the catcher to be the most uh, important player on the field why uh, he's obviously sitting behind the plate he can see first base second base third base the outfield um, he knows what pitch is coming what pitch just got thrown he knows how many strikes there are how many balls how many outs who's up next um, he can see signals he can see things that not everyone on the field can see so if you can make one manager in your store the catcher that can kind of see all that and you could utilize and leverage your other managers to kind of run back and forth and TO deals and work with your sales consultants to do their follow-up and making sure they're staying on task and they're uh, making their phone calls and prospect lists are being worked and customers are being walked through a written process. Um, you can control the flow better and increase your turn um, and you can increase the store's profitability and CSI because you kind of have each person in a designated place with a designated role and kind of knowing what the other guy's doing. So um, the other thing I find that's very consistent is I find a lot of sales managers doing F&I work. And what do I mean by that? Well, um, customer comes in and expresses they might have maybe marginal credit or not. And your salesperson goes and takes a credit application. And your desk guys now begin running those applications and running credit and making a decision to either move forward or not, or even taking it one step further and submitting those applications to the bank. Um, I think this is a huge mistake. If, once again, taking that uh, baseball metaphor, uh, you have finance managers who specialize in finance, who understand the process of interviewing customers and uh, extracting the right information to structure that application and send it to the bank and after that interview and after that structure being able to uh, submit that deal to the bank and now sell it is going to increase increase your approvals um, it's also going to give you more control um, one of the things that I dive into especially when I come onto the desk with your sales managers is I always go into dealer track or wrote one and I check compliance and um, a lot of times um, it's not completed properly because once again, they're just running that credit and making a decision uh, that should be made by someone else. So if you can kind of give that direction and get your managers operating and working together and becoming more efficient, designating roles, um, you're going to get more efficiency out of your store. Uh, so the other thing I also see is I see some sales managers um, handling things like CIT, contracts in transit. And uh, this is another mistake because what you're 
doing is you're taking time off the floor, you're taking time off the sale, you're taking focus away from the sales manager, and you're creating a, another position for them. Um, unless that's how your store is set up where you have like a hybrid manager. But your sales managers and your closers, their responsibility is to get the deal up into a certain point and pass the baton, give it to finance, and let them do their job. And it's F&I's job, finance's job, to complete that process and make sure that you can get funded and make sure whatever income they generate sticks. Um, so they're there to aid the sales department. So again, if you can take that responsibility and that focus away from them, um, you're gonna have a more efficient floor. So the next thing I like to do is I like to run into the finance department and kind of just see what they do, how they operate, and uh, one of the, some of the things that they're focused on, what products are they selling, um, at what point are they getting involved in the deal, and getting involved in a deal early, uh, not just for a sales manager, but for a finance manager, is extremely important because it kind of gives them the pulse of the deal. Once again, extracting the right information, maybe perhaps giving the right guidance, the right vehicle, the right structure, um, can increase approvals and increase your profitability. So um, having F&I focused on getting involved in, in the deal early is extremely important. Um, the next thing is obviously making sure that they're selling the right products. So I always encourage my dealers, and uh, when I do training for them for f and I, I encourage them to focus on retention-based products, products that are gonna drive traffic into your service department. So warranties, maintenance, key replace, tire and wheel, these are all products that are sold in f and I that drive traffic, additional traffic into your service department. And again, increase your profitability, right? So I look at per copy, I look what how many leases they do, how many finances they do, um, and kind of just overall what they're selling. And helping dealers create benchmarks for production is extremely important. So, you know, knowing where you stand, knowing how much you are, you're making per copy is extremely important, but also having a target, you know, and knowing where you wanna be. Once again, you can control that as a finance manager if you're involved in the deal early. So if you're a finance manager out there, Get more, in tool, get more in tune with the sales department. Um, assume your responsibility there. Take control of your department. And instead of sitting in your office waiting for the next deal, get up on that desk. Run that credit. Help with the strategy. Help with structure. Help with guidance. It's going to make your dealership more profitable. Um, the other thing I dive into uh, this particular dealership, I dove into their new hire process. And what I found was this particular store was using a, um, a company, a trainer, that would come in, he would place ads, and come in and uh, attract salespeople to the place, interview them, and then charge them uh, if they wanted to go through and actually work at this store. So um, this particular process was three days. And uh, so when I spoke to these these potential sales consultants. I say potential because they're not selling cars yet, but they've been at that dealership for just about two weeks now. And um, I asked them what the process was like. And uh, it was very shocking to hear that this trainer came in for three days and they said it was amazing. And when they got down to the floor, the staff, sales consultants and managers, um, killed the credibility of this, of this trainer. Uh, basically told them that what you learned up there uh, doesn't apply down here. Forget all of that. Um, breakdown in the system. And again, if you're not inspecting what you expect, you know, things are going to get out of control. It's going to hurt your profitability. It's going to increase your turnover, which is never good for profitability. I mean, we have enough turnover in the car business. When we get new people, we have to nurture them, give them guidance. And uh, so my strategy, my solution for this store is uh, new hires need to be given a written process trained on that process and their first few sales shouldn't be with the staff on the floor it should be with your managers a manager should walk new hires through the entire sales process which means the manager sells a car let them learn to do it the right way because what's happening with your staff is your staff is used to cutting corners um, shortening the process and all of a sudden when they can't come to a deal what do they do they backtrack and they want to you know, go back and, and revisit where they might have missed or it, it's just a breakdown in the process. If you're gonna bring new people into your store and you're gonna acclimate them, acclimate them to the right people, get them doing the things you want them to do, 
not the bad habits that your staff's already doing. Uh, the next thing you have to do is separately, you have to train your staff. So if your, tra if your staff is not trained on a process, you have to pull them aside, separate training, right? Because they're already there, they already know how to sell cars, they're already cutting corners, um, it's an inconvenience because they know all this stuff already. They're not you, they're not a manager. Um, and if you are a sales consultant, you're listening to this. I hope you're listening to this in a very positive way and uh, you can learn something every single day. And the beauty of this business is it's constantly changing. So whatever you did in the past might not work today and whatever you need to do tomorrow or in the future is probably not what you're gonna be doing today. So you have to constantly involve. Don't ever think you know it all, all right? Every day is a new day. Learn from your mistakes. Learn from your accomplishments. Learn from your peers. You can learn just as much what to do from the person doing the right thing or the person doing the wrong thing. So take that into consideration. So new hires, process. Hand them a written process that they can follow, okay? A process is a simple roadmap of a series of steps that you have to take to get yourself to a common goal or, or, or a destination. Uh, which is a goal, right? That you have a goal that you want to achieve, you need a plan in place. The next thing you have to do is follow that process consistently. That consistency is going to breed success, okay? Um, football metaphor, right? When a uh, runner or a wide receiver is running with the ball and he's getting tackled, what are his feet doing? They're still moving to pick up that extra inch, extra foot, extra yard, or hey, break it and keep going, right? So, um, you know, people walk around with this what's in it for me attitude, and if there's nothing in it for me, they don't do it. Well, let me tell you something. The experience that you gain from doing things, whether you earn money or not, is worth more than the monetary reward you're used to having. Um, so, there's always something in it for you, all right? May not reward you today, but if you keep pushing and you keep consistent, when it means something, you're gonna be that much more effective and you're gonna earn it. So um, I can keep going, but just to give an idea, so this was a three-day audit um, where I just, I not only um, see what's going on, but I also offer hands-on recommendations and uh, I submit a series of different solutions. Um, so this particular audit, the dealership can just take my recommendations and run with it, or they could put me on retainer to help them fix it. Now, help them fix it. My, my goal, right, is to, and my success rests on my ability to change the outcome, right? So if I don't produce, there's no need to have me in your store, right? So there has to be a return on investment, which is a win-win but for both sides. So if you're interested in having me come to your dealership uh, to do a live uh, three-day audit, I'd be happy to help you. I'll be happy to see your establishment, see your operation, and make uh, recommendations and suggestions and provide solutions to get your store to the next level, all right? Um, this is about 18 minutes, a little longer than my usual video, but uh, thank you for watching, thank you for listening, and be great.